Our oceans are home to millions of unique plants and animals. The ocean makes up 70% of the Earth and less than 5% has been explored. But the ocean also offers hundreds of activities that attract tourists worldwide, from swimming, to surfing, to fishing, and even hydroboarding. The ocean is a popular vacation spot for water lovers. Though the oceans are full of life and seem to be blooming with activity, a nearly invisible force is threatening our beautiful waters. This threatening force is known as ocean acidification. You're probably thinking, what is that? Well, let's review. This is a pH scale. pH is a measure of how acidic or basic something is. The scale ranges from 0 to 14. Anything with a pH value of 0 to 6 is considered acidic, while a value of 8 to 14 is basic. If a substance has a pH of 7, it is neutral since it is neither acidic or basic. Acidic substances include sodas and fruits. Basic substances can be soap or bleach. Water tends to be neutral. This scale can be used to describe the process of ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is the continuous decrease in pH due to an increased amount of carbon dioxide, or CO2, being absorbed by oceans. Basically, the ocean is becoming acidic when it should be close to neutral. Before the Industrial Revolution to today, the ocean pH has dropped from 8.25 to 8.14, half of the change occurring in just the last 30 years. How did this happen? Humans are the root of this problem. Ocean acidification is caused by large amounts of carbon dioxide being absorbed by the ocean. Human activities such as burning fossil fuels and air pollution greatly increase the amount of carbon dioxide put into oceans. The ocean absorbs an added 25% of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere due to human activities every year. Ocean acidity has increased by 30% since the Industrial Revolution. What happens when CO2 enters the ocean? When CO2 is taken up by the ocean, the seawater and CO2 react. Here is the formula. Carbon dioxide plus water plus carbonate, an ion in water that many organisms rely on to make their shells or skeletons. When the reaction occurs, carbonic acid is formed. Carbonic acid can dissociate or break down into bicarbonate and H plus ions. Since a large amount of CO2 is added to the oceans, a large amount of carbonic acid is produced as well, causing an increase in bicarbonate and H plus ions. H plus ions cause the ocean water to become acidic. The many H plus ions can react with carbonate to form bicarbonate, which makes less carbonate available for creatures to use for shell and skeleton making. To sum it up, more CO2 means more carbonic acid and H plus ions, so less carbonate for shell and skeleton making, and an increase in ocean acidity. Now what's the big deal? What does this all mean? The production of carbonic acid decreases the availability of carbonate, which is essential to many organisms when making their shells and skeletons. Carbonic acid corrodes their shells, causing organisms like snails and shellfish to die. Let's take a look. Here's a shell before being left in acidic water. See how the shell degrades over time? Look at day 45. By this time, the organism is dead. This is the issue oceans are facing. Ocean acidification is harming reproduction, physiology, shell and skeleton formation, and even coral reefs in the oceans. Our oceans are dying. Ocean acidification is greatly harming food webs, which can come back to harm humans. So how do humans play a part? Millions of people rely on coastal jobs like commercial fisheries and shellfish industries. Ocean acidification prevents coral reefs from growing in certain areas, which affects tourism, food webs, food security, and biodiversity. If fish die due to ocean acidification, millions of poor people will lose their jobs. On top of that, millions of people relying on the ocean for food will be faced with starvation. Why do we want to protect our oceans? Our ocean contains countless numbers of animals and plants, some we may not have discovered. We must protect and preserve our oceans in order to continue exploring it. Oceans and humans are also attached. The ocean provides us with food, medicine, resources, transportation, and entertainment. We, in turn, pass laws to preserve the oceans and fight pollution. The oceans are the most unexplored place on this planet, and technology has greatly improved over time to make exploration possible. We are responsible for our Earth and its oceans. So what can be done? 
Scientists are currently studying if adding basic substances to the seawater will counteract the acidity of the water. The effects of ocean acidification can be slowed by reducing processes like eutrophication, when a body of water obtains too many nutrients from the land. Also, the burning of fossil fuels and other activities that release CO2 should be limited. You too can help fight by reducing your carbon footprint, meaning recycle, conserve water, and electricity. Spread the word and join an organization for more ways to help. Remember, though the ocean is vast, it is not immune to what we put into it. If these issues continue, our ocean may no longer be able to sustain life.